What's up creators, Anthony here, and in this video we're going to be talking about computers. What's the best computer for editing? Should I buy a Mac or a PC? What if I need to edit in 4K? How much RAM should I have? What the heck is RAM? What about your processor? How many cores should I have? The list goes on and on. The computer question is something we're being asked all the time. From people just getting started to film school veterans, investing in a computer is a huge decision for you and your business. So how do we make sure we're smart about that investment? Well, in today's video, my goal is to answer all of the questions you have about computers so you can get out there and buy with confidence. On top of that, I'm going to try and make things as simple as possible. So even if you aren't a tech nerd like I am, this will still make perfect sense to you. But before we do that, I have two housekeeping things to cover. The first thing we need to talk about is why should I care about my computer? Now, maybe this is obvious to you, but I wanna stress this. When we talk about camera gear, you'll commonly hear your camera is only as good as your lens allows it to be, meaning that even if you own a $50,000 camera, but you slap a soft old lens on that, it's going to look just as bad as a $500 camera with the same lens on it. The same exact principle applies to computers, or kind of at least. Your computer can easily become the bottleneck in your setup. Let's say you film on a camera that shoots 1080p right now, and you buy a computer that edits 1080p footage like a champ. But eventually, you upgrade to a camera that has 4K. Well, now your computer may be too slow to do that, and now this amazing 4K footage becomes useless because the editing machine you use just can't handle it. So you have to either sit through terribly laggy footage or create proxies, which in itself can take forever and be a huge pain. Or say you want to start getting into animation or motion graphics or visual effects. Again, your computer might limit you in your ability to accomplish that. Sure, it'll be laggy and you can fight through the pain and get it done, but what about the opportunity cost you lose with all of that time wasted as you sit and watch as it just renders so slowly? So the answer here is to try and future-proof your setup by getting great lenses for your camera to grow into and a powerful computer that will remain perfectly valid as you upgrade from camera to camera. So now that we've covered that, let's dive into housekeeping item number two, which is a debate that spans back to the time of cavemen and cave women. Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. Oh, hey, iPod, nice. Yeah, it's just a little something to hold my slow jams. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, and it works so seamlessly with iTunes. You should check out iMovie, iPhoto, iWeb, because they all work like iTunes, you know, oh. iLife. <laughs> Comes on every Mac. I life. Well, I I have some very cool apps that are bundled with with me. Well, like what do you what do you got? Pff, calculator. That's yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Clock. A cl clock. Sounds like sounds yeah. like hours of fun. Yeah. Or at least uh, minutes. Which is better, Mac or PC? You've probably heard this question asked about 10 times in the past seven days alone. My goal right now is to explain this in a way so that people don't need to ask this question. So let me answer this once and for all, which is better? Neither. Probably not what you wanted to hear, but unlike what some crazy brand loyal fans will tell you, it's the truth. Both types of computers are just tools. Tools that we adapt to and learn to manipulate in the most efficient and powerful way possible. These tools are also individually better or worse at specific things. But in the end, in my opinion, the pros and cons cancel themselves out to the point where neither type is overall better or worse than the other. I personally edit on an iMac Pro that costs about $5,400 and I also have a fully upgraded MacBook Pro coming in at $4,500. With that much money invested in Apple, you probably think I would be pretty biased in their favor, right? Wrong. Although I love Macs, I also see PCs as an extremely capable adversary to Macs. I personally own Macs for one major reason. It's what I'm used to. I grew up with Macs and I'm in love with their user interface. I love a lot of small things about Macs, like AirDrop, having iMessage right on my computer, and there's a certain synchronicity you get with Apple when everything you own, between your watch, your phone, your headphones, your computer, your laptop, all owned by Apple, it speeds things up a big degree in my eyes. Now, speed plays a huge role in how I run my business, and the time I would have to spend adapting my entire environment to the PC system would just not be worth it to me. Now, I want to quickly go over this quote I heard from someone in our private Facebook community, and it went like this. 
Computers are like cars. Some people buy cars to work for them, other people buy cars to work on them. Now, I think this is perfect because I've seen it happen in my lifetime so many times. Almost everyone I know who owns a PC loves them because they can work on them. They can upgrade the RAM over time, the storage, the display, the motherboard, the video card, the fans, you name it, you can probably customize it when it comes to PCs. On the other hand, something I really love about Max, being a guy who doesn't really care to build computers, I just buy it and the thing works and it'll work for years and I can always trust its stability. Another thing to consider, with Apple products, you are absolutely paying a premium for what you're getting. Most of the time, whatever specs you get when you buy a Mac, for the same price, you could probably build a PC that is going to look better on paper. Now, my counter argument to this as a Mac user is that there's a certain something to be said for a computer that is built the same exact way, time and time across hundreds and thousands of different users. This level of harmony between all of the parts within Macs in my eyes, helps to give us a whole is greater than the sum of its parts situation. But once I grow out of that computer, I need to buy a new one compared to the PC owner who could just upgrade their existing machine. So hopefully that answers the question of which is better. But to give you actual advice, if you're just beginning and you have no special tie to one interface or the other, and your budget is slim, stick with PC. If you have enough money to buy a Mac, then my recommendation would be to do that, so long as you still have enough money left over to get the gear that you actually need as well. We talk about cameras and lenses and audio gear and so on. On the other hand, if you've spent years on one type of machine, stick to that because the time you'll have to waste learning an entirely new interface just isn't worth it. You could learn so many other things that are gonna benefit you in a much greater fashion. Okay, now that we've covered that massive elephant in the room, if you don't mind me asking you really quickly, if you could just smash that like button and subscribe, that would also be huge. It really helps us out as a channel. But moving on, we can actually start talking about computers and what you should look for from specs to hardware and everything in between. I'm to keep it simple and break things down into just five major categories that you need to consider. First up, we have what is probably the most straightforward, and this is storage. Storage is exactly what it sounds like. How much space do you have on your computer's drive for storing things like pictures, documents, video files, projects, and so on? Now we've talked about storage several times here, but to keep it simple, there are really two keys to storage I wanna cover. The first is that you shouldn't stress too much over how much storage you actually have. The reality with video is you will almost always run out of however much storage you have built into your computer. You can easily buy external hard drives to store all of your footage on or invest in a cloud-based solution as well for backing up old footage. The second key is that not all storage was created equally. We have HDDs, which stands for hard disk drives. We have SSDs, which stands for solid state drives. And Apple has this weird thing they try to sell called the Fusion Drive, which is basically a hybrid between an HDD and an SSD. So HDDs, hard disk drives, are what you're probably familiar with. They've been around for longer and consist of an actual disk that spins around in your computer. HDDs are great in that they're inexpensive. You can get four terabytes, which is 4,000 gigabytes, for just $100. The flip side, they're not very fast for editing. Your footage lives on this drive, and since it's a slower drive, when your editing software pulls on this drive to reference the footage, it takes longer, which slows down your editing experience. On top of that, since the drive is literally a spinning disk, aka a moving part, the odds of that failing over time are much, much higher than something that is solid or not moving. Enter SSDs, solid state drives. These are extremely fast and much more stable considering there are no moving parts. The trade-off is they're much more expensive. Instead of paying just $100 for four terabytes, you pay $845, so eight times the price. That's a huge bummer, but you really should have SSD storage for editing purposes. Once you're done editing a specific batch of footage, you can offload that footage onto a backup drive that is an inexpensive HDD. That way you keep your SSD storage open for only footage that is actively being edited. The issue with this though is that you've now transferred your footage from an exceptionally stable drive to a drive that is much more unstable and likely to fail over time. The key here would be to have multiple backup HDD drives in case one fails. So long story short, when you're looking for a computer, try to have a minimum of 256 to 500 gigabytes of solid state storage on your device. This could be storage that is built into your computer. 
As with anything, the more the merrier. From there, you can load up on HDDs to use as backups. Now, up after storage, at number two on our list, we need to consider RAM, also known as memory. Kind of confusing, right? Because storage and memory sound like the same exact thing. The reality is they're pretty different. I like to think of RAM as the multitasking muscle of your computer. The more you have, the more your computer is capable of handling all at once. Let's say you're editing in Premiere Pro, but you want to add graphics so you open up After Effects, but all of a sudden things slow down like crazy. Well, that's in part due to the fact that you don't have enough RAM. Now, RAM, like storage, is also measured in gigabytes. The more gigabytes, the more multitasking power you have. Video editing is a heavy task to place on a computer. So minimally, we want 16 gigabytes of RAM. That should be more than enough to edit 1080p footage. It's also right on the edge of being able to edit 4K footage. It'll definitely lag, but you could probably get through it depending on how fast the rest of your computer is. Up after 16 gigabytes, we have 32 gigabytes, which is what I would recommend. That should allow you to pretty cleanly edit 4K footage and run multiple applications all at once. Then finally, 64 gigabytes and up, you're looking pretty good. One thing to note with RAM is that like storage, not all RAM was created equal. There are different speeds that RAM can have. This speed is measured in megahertz, but through most of my research, the differences in performance caused by RAM speed isn't anywhere near as significant as the differences you would find jumping up the amount that you actually have in your computer. Okay, up next at category number three, we have your computer's central processing unit, commonly referred to as the CPU. This is like your computer's brain, and when you combine this with your RAM, that's really how you determine the speed of your computer. Now, CPU has three things we really need to talk about. The first First is the total number of cores. So back in the day, CPUs were just one core, and then they came out with dual core processors, and then we had quad core processors, and now there are 20 core processors and even beyond that. To put it all into reference though, my iMac is a 12 core and my MacBook Pro is an eight core. I would say we minimally want four cores in any device we're editing on. Again, the more the merrier. So we have a total number of cores, but then we also have our core clock speed, which is basically indicating how fast each individual core in your CPU is. As you add more cores, their individual clock speeds will typically go down. As you can see here, as we customize the iMac Pro and increase the number of cores from eight core to 14 cores, the clock speed goes from 3.2 to 2.5 gigahertz. It's still a faster processor though, as the total number of cores increase significantly. One thing I wanna mention about this is that certain editing softwares utilize the cores differently. For instance, last I checked, Premiere Pro utilizes all of your cores at once, whereas After Effects optimizes for one individual core's clock speed. Kind of annoying if you think about it because now we have two programs that work in an inverse fashion of each other when it comes to utilizing your CPU. But the major takeaway is you should check with the editing software you spend most of your time in and see what it optimizes for. Now, the third thing we need to consider with CPU is the actual processor itself. The two main manufacturers in the world are AMD and Intel. Long story short, AMD is getting much better, but Intel is still the king. Within the range of Intel, you'll see a variety of different options, notably the i5, the i7, and the i9. These represent newer generations of each processor. All of them are good, but the i7 and the i9 are significantly faster, with the i9 being extremely powerful. That's what I have in both of these computers. Okay, up after CPU at number four, we need to consider the graphics processing unit, also known as the GPU. Along with the name GPU and graphics processor unit, it's also called the graphics card and the video card. Now, to compare this to the CPU, which focuses primarily on the complex mathematics calculations needed to run your computer as a whole, the GPU focuses on the geometrical tasks surrounding the processing of 2D and 3D graphics. Being video editors, this is pretty important. Now again, this depends a lot on the program you're working with and whether or not it offloads a lot of its tasks to GPU instead of the CPU. In a perfect world, your computer would give as much as it possibly could to the CPU and then offload any specific task to the GPU so that both were working in parallel together. That would be extremely fast. The reality though is some programs don't utilize the GPU as much as they probably should. Now, when it comes to what type of GPU you should have for your computer, like CPU, there are really two manufacturers 
manufacturers that we need to talk about. The first is AMD and the second is Nvidia. As far as quality and performance is concerned, Nvidia is the king. It's much faster than AMD. Both of these computers though have AMD GPUs, so don't think you need Nvidia. It is significantly more expensive. Now, GPUs also have a memory associated with them like RAM does, measured in gigabytes. When it comes to that number, I would recommend a base level of two gigabytes. And be careful here because sometimes graphics cards will measure their memory in the form of megabytes, not gigabytes. So if you see something along the lines of 1600 MB, that's letting you know it has 1.6 gigabytes of RAM associated with that graphics card. Now finally, coming in at number five, we have to talk about the motherboard. Now this is something a lot of people don't actually talk about. What the motherboard really is, is basically the glue that holds everything we've talked about together. Your motherboard ensures that everything in your system works together seamlessly. It also determines what types of ports your computer has and the ability to upgrade your computer over time. Does it have an area for expandable RAM and other things like that? The reason this aspect isn't talked about as much is because with Macs, the decision making is already done. The Apple motherboard, or logic board as they call it, is just part of the computer. You choose your motherboard when you choose the type of Mac that you want. So as far as that's concerned, there's not much room for customization. So for you PC builders out there, make sure you do the research on what type of motherboard suits your needs best. I personally, being a Mac user, I'm not an expert in motherboards because I just have the logic boards that I'm currently stuck with. But aside from that, that really does it for what you need to consider when you're looking for a computer. To summarize really quick, my minimum recommendations for computer specs would be the following. 256 gigabytes of solid state storage, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a four core CPU with an i5 processor, a GPU with at least two gigabytes of RAM, and a motherboard that aligns with what you want out of your computer. And again, that's the minimum recommendation. Now, if you do have more money to spend and you were looking at which areas to upgrade more, I would say focus on the RAM and the CPU. Aim for 32 gigabytes of RAM in a four to eight core CPU with an i7 or an i9 processor. So hopefully this information helps you in your computer purchasing journey. If you feel discouraged because you don't have enough money to buy the computer you want just yet, go out and land paid jobs with whatever gear you currently own. Never let gear hold you back from starting your filmmaking journey, especially considering that the fastest way to upgrade your gear is to get out and shoot, get paid for that, and then upgrade your gear with that money. So the goal of this video was to provide clarity to you, not just on what computer to buy, but how to actually analyze computers and make smart buying decisions. If you wanna learn this same process, but for camera gear, lights, audio gear, gimbals, and so on, we've built out the world's most affordable program that covers all things filmmaking. It's called 14 Day Filmmaker, and it contains over 100 different video trainings, which outline every single aspect of the filmmaking process, giving you the ability to turn your passion into a full-time career. The amount of money you'll be able to save maximizing your budget through what we recommend in the program will vastly outweigh the price we charge. Speaking of which, anybody who enrolls gets 60% off the entire Adobe Creative Cloud. So applications like Premiere Pro, After Effects, Lightroom, Photoshop, and so on, all 60% off. That alone will pay for the course in just two months. We currently have over 5,000 people in the 14-day filmmaker program and they love the content that we're giving them. They've upped the game when it comes to their filmmaking careers and they're just crushing it. So if you're interested, click the link below and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. It really does help this channel grow. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.